Welcome to Ulysses S. Grant National Historic Site. We are glad you have chosen to attend our program today. My name is Christine Sneeringer. I am currently a volunteer in the park, although I was formerly a ranger here. I'm hoping that you will recall the love story of Ulysses S. Grant and Julia Dent. Theirs is one of the most famous love stories in American history. As we sing, perhaps you can think about their love. During the 19th century, live music was really the only form of musical entertainment available. Julia played the piano and Emma played guitar, Emma being her sister. Music was expressive then as now of daily life. Shenandoah, which I have just sung for you, is a song that is known today as a sea chanty. It originated in the area of the Missouri and the Mississippi River, so really not far from where we are now. And it was taken down river to New Orleans and then it spread to the world. The song deals not with the Shenandoah River of Virginia, as you might imagine, but with Chief Shenandoah and his maiden daughter. A young white man has fallen in love with her and she with him. And it is his intention to take her with him to share his life. They are not hiding this from Chief Shenandoah. Uh, in fact, they are respectfully telling him what they are going to do. And uh, so that makes this song not only a song about uh, love between uh, two sweethearts, but also of the father for his daughter and she for him. The composer of the song is completely unknown, but every version varies. So I think you could say actually there have been many composers. So we're going to move on now and we're going to do songs that in, talk about other aspects of love. For example, fun longing, pain, romance, durability, and beauty. And I hope you enjoy the program. This next song is called Cindy. It originated in the 19th century in Appalachia and it reached great popularity around 1850. It's very gay and happy and upbeat and it was used for what is called a play party song. It was the sort of a game that young people could enjoy who were not allowed to touch each other except perhaps fleetingly in a dance. The only musical accompaniment was often foot stamping, toe tapping, uh, finger snapping, and this sort of thing. They'll, although there might have been um, some musical instruments, but not necessarily so. Um, so, the, let's uh, hear about Cindy. You want to see my Cindy? She lives the way down south. Now she's so sweet, the honeybees, they swarm around her mouth. The first I see my Cindy, the standing in the door. Her shoes and stockings in her hand, her feet spread round the floor. Get along home, Cindy, Cindy. Get along home, Cindy, Cindy, get along home, Cindy. 
to the fun song Cindy that we just heard, we're now going to hear The Girl I Left Behind Me. It originated in about 1500, but it was printed first in Dublin in 1791. However, it was in America already in 1650. It was played by military bands, the melody being carried by the fife. So you can imagine what kind of gayness the fife uh, engendered. Oh, the dames of France are fond and free, and Flemish lips are really willing. Very soft the maids of Italy, and Spanish eyes are so thrilling. So, although I've asked beneath their smile, their charms were failed to bind me, and my heart falls back to Aaron's Isle, to the girl I left behind. often a more serious side of love and in this particular case we're going to sing about longing. Julia and uh, Ulysses often were separated and longed for the company of each other which they often in their life did not have. There are other kinds of longing too. There's the longing of unrequited love and the song we're going to do now is called Lorena. It was written by Reverend Henry de Lafayette Webster in about 1857. It happens that he was a Canadian living in Chicago. But it's based on a true story. Ella Bloxon broke off her engagement to the composer and married a lawyer who became Chief Justice of the Ohio Supreme Court. The reason she did this was not because she didn't love him, but because her sister and her guardian, who was her brother-in-law, insisted. So apparently Webster pined for her most of the rest of his life. And the song is beautiful, but, um, but sort of sad. It was often sung in military camps, uh, even in the South, even though it was published in the North but eventually it was banned because it demoralized the troops so seriously and made them so homesick and they often deserted as a result. So here we have Lorena. The years creep slowly by Lorena, the snow Love also envisions an aspect of pain at times. Um, the song Barbara Allen tells about that pain. 
It was first found in about 1622 in England, Scotland, and in America as well. I probably enjoyed oral transmission being brought to America by the pilgrims. There are many variants, and in some variants, Barbara Allen dies knowing that she has caused Jemmy to die of a broken heart. There are over 500 recordings of this particular song. exactly sympathetic, I don't think. All right, the next song that we're going to uh, experience is Stars of the Summer Night, and it is purely romantic as far as I'm concerned. The text was written in 1842 by Henry Longfellow, and it was written for a play called The Spanish Student. Notice as I sing that there's a progression going on throughout the poem. For example, it begins with stars of the summer night, and they have golden light. Moon of the summer night comes next, and it has silver light. Wind comes next, and it doesn't have any particular light except pinion's light. Pinions are one of a bird's feathers, a particular feather. And then dreams of the summer night. In every verse, the first line ends with night, and the third line ends with light. in the 19th century that dealt with love and death. And normally it was the death of the female partner in the relationship. All Through the Night, which went into print in 1784 in Wales, is such a song. 
It was popular in America by 1825 when John Quincy Adams happened to be president. And um, it definitely is a song about the death of the beloved. Moving on, uh, the next song is about the durability of love. And it was written in 1866 by a Canadian composer who was living in Chicago, and it was written for his beloved Maggie Clark. He was looking forward to growing old with her, and in this song, he looks forward to their old age and how they would feel about each other then. When you and I were young, Maggie. I wandered today to the hill, Maggie, to watch the sea below the creek and the old rusty mill, Maggie, where we sat in the long, long ago. that we're going to enjoy today is Beautiful Dreamer. It was written in about 1864, and I think it is one of the most beautiful love songs ever written. I am reminded of a dream that Julia had. She and Grant had been courting for some time, but Grant had orders to move on to his next duty station. At about that same time, Julia acquired a new bed with posters. And as was the custom at the time, she named the posters. So one of them she named Grant. It happened that she was having a friend to spend the night with her. Um, and her friend was told the dream that Julia had the next morning. Julia had dreamed that Ulysses appeared at Whitehaven on Monday next wearing civilian clothes. 
and the friend assured Julia that this would not happen because Ulysses was already on his way down river. When Monday came, there was Grant, dressed in civilian clothes, just as in Julia's dream. So, the dream came true. Without further ado, let's listen to Beautiful Dreamer. Beautiful Dreamer, wake unto me. Starlight and dewdrops are waiting for thee. Sounds of the Valentine's Day is the day we celebrate loves of many kinds. It may be love for a sweetheart or a spouse. It may be love of a child or grandchildren, or it may be love of friends. Our lives, though, often seem touched by hatred. This is not really so different than it was during the Civil War era. We know, for example, that within the Dent family, there was a lot of disagreement and misunderstanding between the various family members, and this was only overcome with love. So make a point to love people every day, today and every day, even those who disagree with you. The world will be a better place for it. Thank you for attending our program today. I hope to see you at the park in the near future. Take care.